Hola amigos, and welcome to Sanctioneering. And welcome back to the Dimensional Analysis playlist series. Uh, I started this about a year ago and I never really got around to continuing it, but I really, really want to get back to Dimensional Analysis because I think that this is a super useful tool. Um, well, so whether you're taking physics or you're in high school or you're about to start some engineering courses, I think Dimensional Analysis is extremely helpful to of doing some derivations and understanding of the equations. Um, so this will be an overview of many of the important dimensions and uh, we'll try to understand some of these derivations that can help with um, understanding some concepts. So I have this uh, lovely little table here. I put it on my website, sanchengineering.weebly.com. It's in the physics section. You can click the link in the description and go right to the table, take a screenshot, whatever. I try not to advocate for memorizing, but if there's one thing that you got to memorize in physics or engineering, it would be dimensional analysis. More importantly than memorizing, understanding the table and understanding all the dimensions as best as you can. We've already gone over mass, which of course is the amount of matter in an object. It's based on the number of atoms and its dimensions are in mass, capital, and its variable is in lowercase, careful not to mix that up. And of course, a typical example would be in kilograms in SI or pounds force in American units. And in length, I really want to go over a video just on length by itself because it's extremely interesting. Length is just literally just um, the distance in space from point A to point B. And this is the next base dimension that will be used to derive other uh, um, equations. So its variables might be in X. So X axis is horizontal, Y could be vertical or into the plane, as well as Z could also be vertical or depth. So length, width, height. You might have done it in even in elementary school, you know, when you first learn about volume. And its dimensions, we're going to use capital L. So a, um, and some units will be in kilometers or meters, centimeters, and in American units, uh, inches or feet. So how long is the ruler or how long is a pen or whatever. Um, careful because the variable for mass is a lowercase m and the dimension is an uppercase m and the unit for length is a lowercase m as well. So be very careful, don't convert your units. Uh, don't mix up your units with your dimensions. So next up we have time. Time can be extremely tricky, especially if you ask a physicist, but we're just going to consider time in the literal sense. For instance, the time it takes a ball to fall down 50 feet or something. Um, time is easy, lowercase t, and it can be uppercase or lowercase t. Um, don't confuse it with temperature, which we're not going to go over just quite yet. And of course, this is just going to be in hours or minutes or seconds, days, years. All right, so those are the base dimensions, mass, length, and time. So mass, length, and time are going to be used to derive pretty much every other equation you'll ever use in four years, um, whether it's physics, chemical engineering, um, the ones that we're neglecting right now are our temperature, which we'll consider, and things related to electrical engineering. So there's also current, right? So we're just going to have mass, length, and time, and we're going to use them to derive several other types of dimensions. So, for example, let's do an example. If we take length, which will be in our x axis, this is x, which we'll use length in brackets and multiply by y or width which again is also length this is length and width you may recognize this as you know length times width that's going to give us area so area is going to be multiplying two length dimensions and give us length squared all right so area is multiplying two length dimensions together and of course if we take two two areas and multiply those across, we'll get length, width, and height, which of course is a volume. So volume is equal to length times width times height. But in dimensional analysis, this is the key. This is just gonna be length all around, three length dimensions, or length cubed. So, if length is one dimension in x, area is two dimensions in x and y, and volume is three dimensions in x, y, z. So we live in the third dimension, so this can be, um, so this is extremely useful to think about. 
So what about if we take a mass dimension? So let's take mass and divide it by volume. Well, you might recognize this as density, D or rho. And the dimensional analysis of this guy. So let's kind of analyze this. Mass, of course, is already in mass. Volume is, as we've just described, in three length dimensions. So the dimensions for density are going to be mass divided by length cubed. So this is useful to realize and understand because if you think about density, it's the amount of matter in an object per unit volume of space that it occupies. We'll go over density if that doesn't make sense to you. Okay, so we've done area and volume, which again are uh, length dimensions. And uh, now we, and we've done density, which is length and volume. Um, so now let's take a look at velocity. So velocity is similar to speed, but it's not quite the same. And we'll go over the differences. If you consider a car going east at, let's say, 60 miles per hour, we've now described its its um, speed or its velocity. So velocity is a vector. So if you've taken physics, vectors are very useful to understand as well. But the velocity is going to be given by the distance or the length divided by the time. And if we do some dimensional analysis on this guy, we'll know that we'll know that the length, the miles, is going to be a length dimension, of course. And the time, of course, is time. So the dimensions for velocity is going to be in length per time. This is very useful for calculus and physics because dividing by time is called a derivative. I can do a whole series on just intro calculus stuff. So now, <clears throat> right, so at this point we've done area, volume, which again are length dimension manip manipulations, density, which in incorporates mass and length, and velocity, which is length and time. So now we've done a little bit of everything. Uh, let's take a crack at acceleration real quick because that's also very useful. So acceleration is, this is now introductory calculus, which I can do a whole, <laughs> don't even get it started on acceleration. Um, but acceleration is just taking velocity and dividing it by time. And we said, so again, some more dimensional analysis. We just said that velocity, which is, where is it? right over here. We just said that's length per time. And of course, time is just time. So acceleration, the dimensions are going to be length per time per time, or just simply length per time squared. So there's that. <clears throat> okay, so if you've taken physics, you may know that Newton's second law is an equation that says that force is equal to mass times acceleration. So again, some quick dimensional analysis on this guy. If we know that m is simply mass, acceleration is length per time squared, then the dimensions for force are going to be mass times length per time squared. So this is a really good example of a manipulation using all three base dimensions, mass, length, and time. And what this is telling us is that if we have a mass and move it through a distance of a length divided by the time it takes squared, that will give you the force of that object. And this is an extremely useful relation that describes a number of different things in the universe, and without it, we would not be where we are historically. Well, let's take it a couple steps further. So what if we take force and multiplied it through a distance? You'll learn in physics that this is actually work or energy. So again, let's do some dimensional analysis. So force, we just said that it's mass times length per time squared, mass times length per time squared, and distance, of course, is a length, so the units for energy or work are going to be mass times length squared per time squared. One more example, one more. What if we take work and divide it by time? Now work or energy per time is going to be power. So how much power does it take to run your microwave? Or how much power does it take to run a car? And we just said that work is going to be mass right here times length squared per time squared all over time so the dimensions for power are overall going to be mass times length squared divided by time squared times time which is going to be time cubed so the overall dimensions for power are mass times length squared per time to the third power so i challenge you to apply this to your studies and try to think about how dimensions are applied to equations i think that they're extremely useful 
and uh, it can help you really understand these derivations. Remember, it's not about memorizing this material to get through these exams. It's about trying to apply it and fundamentally understand where these equations are coming from. So I challenge you to use this in your studies and I hope that you can apply it to try to understand some more principles. If you have any questions, feel free to comment or message me on Instagram or Facebook at Sanchengineering or check out my website sanchengineering.weebly.com. Remember, if you're a science YouTuber or social media user, I'd love to give you a shout out. Please let me know if you have any questions and I'll try to tackle them. Don't forget to share this with your friends, family, and your dog.